Welcome to the Bible study. If you've been here before, welcome back. And just a quick reminder that uh, the full transcript is down below. And while you're going there, uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Appreciate that. So let's continue with 1 John 5, 11 through 12. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Interesting points. First, John has already mentioned testimony several times in the last few verses. In this sixth instance, he speaks to eternal life from God and life in the Son, which provide additional reassurances to Christians regarding their salvation. Second, already mentioning eternal life in 1 John 1, 2, 2, and 3, 15, John will address it again in 1 John 5, 13, and 20. John 3, 16 underlines that eternal life is central to the changed state of a believer and the rest of his gospel mentions eternal life on numerous occasions, especially with Nicodemus in chapter 3 and the woman at the well in chapter 4. Third, in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus has life and is life, both abundant life and eternal life. Part of John's purpose in, this, in writing this letter is to counter discouragement. Judging from 1 John 2, 25 through 26, false teachers were telling believers that they really didn't have eternal life. Fourth, the need for Christ and only Christ is also the message proclaimed by all the apostles. When brought before the religious leaders, Peter said, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. From Acts 4.12 Paul taught, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, from Romans 1.16. People, this verse removes all doubt concerning who will have eternal life. Only those who have the Son of God. There is no other path to God. The world does not want to hear that because it does not want to acknowledge that it is deprived, blind to the truth, and needing to be saved from an eternity in hell, which is the consequence of sin. We have seen this theme abiding in Jesus several times already in this letter. As we consider the word having the Son of God, both as our Savior and in our lives, how does this translate to our decision making? How do we behave? What do we say? Our motivations and our approach to life and ministry. If our lives bear no evidence of Jesus to the casual observer, then this verse is a dose of reality concerning whether we have the Son of God. May our lives truly imitate our Savior's, as captured in Philippians 2, so that we will continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in us to will and act according to his good purpose. From Philippians 2, 12-13. That's our study for 1 John 5, 11 through 12 for today. And uh, just if you made it this far, thank you. And once again, there's a full transcript down below. And we'll see you on the next one.